My name is Thaddeus, and welcome to the Sherwood Forest Book Club, where we take just a few minutes to examine a work of fiction or nonfiction that is at least tangentially related to Robin Hood. This one is very directly related in that it is the novel Robin Hood by Henry Gilbert from the year 1918. Now, around the time when this book came out, there was lots of stories being published about Robin Hood, very popular figure at, in the early 20th century, but mostly what you were finding were the children's books, the adaptations of the ballads for children, lots of familiar incidences like Robin Hood pretending to be a butcher and or a potter to trick the Sheriff of Nottingham, Robin meeting Little John on the bridge and them having their quarterstaff duel, having the friar carry him across the stream, just a lot of the same stories repeated in new variations again and again. This book diverges from that, and it's not really a children's book. Is it a in-depth, well-thought-out novel that I would recommend to most adults? Not especially. It really meanders. Um, it doesn't ever settle very directly on who Robin Hood is and his motivations. The characterization is a little bit all over the place, but it still makes an interesting read that is different from most other works. It has a heavy emphasis on the conflict that was existing between the poor people at the time versus the wealthy landowners. There's an emphasis on how downtrodden the serfs are, how much they're being taken advantage of. That notion of Robin as the champion of the people is really embraced. One of the things it does that's also interesting is introduce a number of characters that you don't see other places, some of whom I really quite like, like Black Hugo, the forester who works against Robin. He's one of the multiple reoccurring villains, which is one of the problems with the book. There's kind of too many villains, and it's hard to keep track of them all and their various schemes. It has a character I actually quite like, have a personal affection for, named Jack Wilkinson, who's this superstitious uh, serf who's afraid of the forest, afraid of fairy beings, but it still kind of overcomes that fear to assist Robin Hood in uh, the wooing of Alan Dale and his lady love. And it brings in a lot of other merry men who do appear in other sources, but this uses them a little more heavily. Gilbert of the White Hand, Will Stutely are all in here. The members of the merry men that I think get the most attention in this book, though, are Ket the Trow and Hob o' the Hill, which are two fairy beings, these little elfin fellows that live in a mound. Uh, Robin and Marion spend a night inside their home at one point. They disappear through the woods at will and reappear and are generally mysterious, sometimes treated just like short people, but other times like magical creatures. And it is not a book that is otherwise otherworldly or supernatural, but it has these two characters that are at least of a supernatural leaning, and they feature very heavily in the book. Like I said, though, it's not a great novel. It doesn't flow well. There's not a strong binding narrative arc. In addition, though, to having a little bit of a different approach and delving into some characters that you don't normally see a lot, one other thing I did really appreciate is it takes at least a few moments to look at some real history that tends to get glossed over in Robin Hood stories. Like I said, this is the Robin Hood that is the champion of the oppressed. And something that's not mentioned in a lot of Robin Hood stories are things like the Massacre of York that happened in 1190, which is right around the time that most Robin Hood stories are being told where over a hundred Jewish people in York were burned to death or slaughtered by a, an angry mob. It's a horrible moment of history, but one that doesn't get taught very much, and one I only first learned about by reading this book when Will Stutely finds some people that had fled from that terrible massacre and helps reunite them with their family in Nottingham. You know, this is a book that I've had since my childhood, and goes back much further. It's why it's in rather poor condition, I'm afraid. 
And so I do appreciate those elements about uh, in regards to this book. Am I going to give it a strong recommendation to most people? No. But if you're looking for something that is decidedly different, you could do worse. Thank you.